So the game that I've been waiting for this year, AFK Journey, is right around the corner. This game is f to be friendly and can be played on PC and mobile on March 27, 2024 across various countries and regions. It's also an idle gacha game or hero collection game. But I think it's a fusion between MMO and idle RPG game. So it sure is very unique. Another fun thing about this game is that you don't have to do lots of grinding. You just need to be active every day and everything will be taken care of. In this video, I will tell you everything that I know about this game. Like the environment, characters and equipment system, gacha system, story and quests, battle system, and pro tips on how to play this game in the right way. So just feel free to choose the topic you'd like to know from the timestamp. Okay, first, let's talk about the environment. First of all, this game is massive. I'm not talking about space or storage though, but I'm talking about the map of this game. Or we can also call it the Asperia world. You can see right here that the map is pretty big, and it will get bigger as the game gets through every update. This game is also perfect for casual games because of the unique canvas art style that makes it look like a storybook. Very beautiful. You can also see here that the ambience is very comforting and even the back sound is soothing and relaxing. It also doesn't feel empty because there are lots of enemies, NPCs, villages and cities, dungeons, and even animals. There are also lots of chests that you can collect. Also some interesting and challenging puzzles. The thing that I would like to point out is that you'll never get bored of this game and it will be fun to just roam around Asperia. And the best thing for me is that this game has day and night cycles and weather. So I feel like this world is very lively. I know for some people, getting to another point of the map is kinda tiring. Especially if the map is huge. But you don't have to worry because in this game, you can teleport to the point you'd like via teleport waypoint. So no more wasting time. The thing that I also love about the game is that this game is very smooth. So for example, if I teleport somewhere, it's just like, boom, I'm there. No loading, no black screen, it's very smooth. Also, if you zoom out the map, you can see how smooth the transition is. Then moving on to character and equipment. Let's talk about the characters first. So there are lots of interesting characters from different roles such as support, rogue, marksman, mage, warrior, and tank. There's also a fraction as well called molar, light bearer, wilder, grave boar, celestial, and hypogean. But although there's so many characters, you don't have to worry on not being able to upgrade all of them because this game has resonance system. And that means you just need to upgrade your 5 characters and the rest of your characters will automatically will follow the list level of your 5 heroes like you can see here in this video. But small tips from me, don't wait until you get legendary or epic heroes to upgrade your characters just cause you need to spare your resources. Just upgrade the 5 heroes that you had because seriously, there's nothing to lose. Even if you just had this cheap mong, your resource will never go to waste. All of the heroes in this game are good, I repeat. All heroes are good in their own way. So there's no bad heroes even if you have the lowest rarity ones. Of course, there are some heroes that are better than the others. But just level up your heroes as soon as you can. It's worth it. This thing also applies to equipment. You can apply equipment from one role and then automatically, the heroes that have the same role will be equipped by them also. So you don't need to collect a huge amount of equipment sets for your heroes. You just need one set of equipment and all your heroes are good to go. You can replace the old equipment with a better one just by one click. Now what happens when you don't need your old equipment? You can recycle them and forge the stone to upgrade your better equipment. The point is, this game is very easy. The things that make this game super fun is to collect the character. So in this topic, I'm gonna talk about the gacha system. To do the gacha or collecting the heroes is so easy and fun. Why? Once again, this game is F2P friendly. 
because you can see here there are lots of free in fights you can collect and right here you can get an a tier hero just by logging in every day so be sure to just be active every day now let's go back to the gacha system there are lots of ways you can do to get the invites like exploring, doing quests, using diamonds, and more. Trust me, you'll get invites easily and I'll explain more about it in the gacha system. You can get to the mystical house and go to noble tavern right here. And there, you can choose which banner you want to pull. Here I chose the all hero recruitment. You can use this envelope to do the gacha. But if you want to use diamond, it's okay. But I'm gonna suggest rather than doing the single summon, it will cost you 300 diamond per summon. So just be patient and do the 10 times summon because it only cost about 27,000 diamonds, so you can save about 300 diamonds. So per 10 summon, you will get an A tier hero. And for pity, it's 60 summons and you'll guarantee to get the S tier hero. And it also has a wish list so you can manage your wish list based on the hero that you want to get or the copy of the hero that you also want. So it will increase the chance of getting the heroes that you want. Let's do the pull. I was hoping for an S tier hero of course. Every roll doesn't matter. So we get Cecilia, who is an S tier hero. Super happy with it. Cecilia is one of the strongest DPS in the game, so to get her in the early game is gonna give you a huge advantage. So, super grateful. <laughs> Moving on to the next topic, we're gonna talk about the story and the class. I don't want to talk much about the story because I don't want to spoil anything. But the point is, the main character has amnesia and through your journey, you'll find a friend or companion that will accompany you throughout your journey. The story is very well written and even they have voice actors and beautiful cutscenes. There's already lots of story quests and set quests that you can do. And it's not hard at all. If you're doing the quest, there will be a quest tracking feature which will save your time and guide you so you won't get lost. But if you want it to be more challenging, you can do it without using the feature. Not only quest tracking, if you click the quest right here, it will automatically teleport you to the nearest waypoint and also walk on its own. So it's a full AFK experience and you can finish your quest while doing stuff like eating or working and yeah, it will be done by itself. The battle itself is fun and simple. This game uses a bullet timing mechanism so you can adjust the position of your heroes and team composition. You can also see here that you can see which heroes are your enemies after or the other way around. Normally, you will put your tank in front of the others. The damage dealer is conditional and support mostly is in the back. If your hero used their ultimate, you can drag your ult wherever you want it. And also, if there are barrels in the battle, you can take advantage of it by blowing them to the enemies. Sometimes, there will be obstacles in the arena. So, you just need to be smart to position your heroes. There's also a faction strategy and you can see the weakness from your enemy's faction. So you can replace the hero that you want to put in the arena. Like I said earlier, all heroes are good, so it's just based on the situation and condition. So normally you will use 3 heroes from the same fashion to get a buff. Maybe it sounds kinda complicated, but don't worry because it's an AFK game, so you can also AFK in the battle. Just let the game do the rest. This game also has an auto battle and 2x speed, and trust me, the auto battle is smart. It will do the right thing and it's exactly what you want. But if you want to enjoy the game, you can just do it by yourself and just have fun. To my servant and fight for me. And the last topic is a humble pro tips from me to you. So I'm just gonna make it simple. 
So, the game is an AFK game, so don't ignore your AFK progress. You can find your AFK progress below here, so just click it and you'll get your rewards. And that's the first thing you have to do after logging in to the game. These rewards will get bigger as the time goes, so if you're working or going to school, your account will still be grinding for you and when you come back, you can collect it. You can also do grinding by yourself to get more rewards. But remember, this is a castle game, so yeah, just treat it like one. And you can see here is your AFK level. And it's better for you to push this level and don't ignore it. It's the most important requirement for you to progress the game. And the higher level you are, the bigger your rewards gonna be. You will also get interesting rewards after completing each stage. And also, don't ignore battle mode. You can click here and you can enter the battle mode and you can see here that there are few modes. Currently, I can only open 3 modes which are Dream Realm, Arena, and Honor Duel. You can see here the requirement to open this mode is by progressing the FK battle like I said earlier. Do it because it's worth it. Although your hero is not strong, if the battle mode has unlocked, just enter the battle. Why? I'm gonna give you an example. If you go into the arena and fight other players who are lower or the same level as you, and you do the arena over and over again, you'll get arena coins that you can exchange to an S tier hero. Not just arena, but all the battle modes will give you great reward. So once again, just do it until you're not able to. Next is join a guild as soon as you can. You can choose a guild that has many members. Because of guild, you can also grind guild coins to get triple S tier in the guild store. Once you are a member of a guild, remember to just be active so you won't get kicked. If you ask me which hero is the best, I would say that all heroes are good. But there are some of my personal favorites, which is Torrent, who for me is a very good tank. Cynthia, Peperian, and Odi are also very good DPS, and you can easily get them in the early game. Especially Odi, don't sleep on him. He offers very good DPS from early to late game, and you will be happy to get his copy. And for healer, Smokey and Mirky is the best. But there are still lots of cool heroes that you might want to try, so yeah, just choose your favorite. And that's all that I can tell you guys about this game. The point is, I love this game. I can't wait for it to be released, and I want you all to try it because it's super worth it, and it's free! Thank you so much for watching, bye!